if people aren't questioning if you're natural and you are natural, you're not doing something right. So guys, Derek moreplacemoreace.com. Today we are going to be talking about Eric Bugenhagen. This is a highly requested natty or not, and this guy has a phenomenal physique, and um, I guess he's sort of developed a very good reputation for sort of being right on the brink of what could conceivably be like a genetic phenom and a guy who might just be on gear. So that's what we're gonna be getting into. This guy is a WWE wrestler. He is turning 32 or 33 shortly. And his stats are the main thing that we're gonna use off the bat to kind of gauge what we're looking at here because this guy has a great physique. No one's gonna question that. Um, it would be one thing if he just had good inserts and he had a reasonable weight. Like some of his lifts are extraordinary too. Like he's benching like, uh, um, almost five plates. He's almost maxing out five plates on the bench. He's probably like, uh, let's see, this is the most recent PR, 475. Get it, babe, get it! All the way, all the way, keep going, keep going, keep going! <laughs> this guy just has like some of the most grinder fucking reps you'll see and um, Presumably he's on a bulk phase right now because he's looking a lot fluffier in his uh, in his videos lately that have people thinking, you know, this guy might actually be natty because this is, you know, doesn't look as impressive as some of his old shots may have. But you have to keep in mind how much extra weight he's holding. It's not just necessarily that, you know, you look less impressive when you're holding fat. Everyone knows that this is likely the same amount of muscle he has now he just has a layer of fat on him. His body composition is six foot one, 233 pounds, according to the pro wrestling fandom.com page. So he's a WWE wrestler and he has essentially been involved in wrestling his whole life. And he is uh, very consistent in terms of his progress. He has not fluctuated significantly up and down. He has not you know, has any visual side effects of steroid use, even though he has the sheer amount of muscle looks borderline unnatural, the kind of like inserts he has do not look significantly overly androgenic, if that makes sense. When you look at disproportionate growth in certain body parts, you'll often see guys on gear getting disproportionate growth in the traps, the delts, etc. And with him, his progress looks sort of it's very hard to explain exactly what I'm trying to say, but it does not look like a traditional roid head. That makes sense. It looks more like a naturally achieved jacked physique. However, the actual metrics themselves, 233 pounds at six foot one with a body fat percentage of, I don't know, like here he is, is this the weight where he is 233 or is this 233 when he is kind of like fat and needs to lose you know, 20 pounds, even though he has visible abs here, but he, you know, would need to lose 15, 20 pounds to look like this again. If this is 233, it's going to be pretty hard to justify that this guy's natural. But let's just say, you know, his stats generally, I don't know when these metrics were taken, when these numbers were taken, but um, when he's not like depleted down and sucked down and as lean as he can possibly get, if he's 233, um, he's walking around at maybe like what looks to be like 15% body fat, maybe on a regular basis. Like he's lean, but he's not shredded. He has visible abs, but he also has a very developed musculature to the point where you would see abs at a higher body fat percentage than traditionally. You might only see a guy who's much skinnier have it at like 10 to 12% kind of thing. Like this guy has visible abs pretty much no matter what he's doing. But like if this was the 233, this would be very fucking hard for me to ever say like, yeah, it's definitely natural. So I don't know, like going back, I don't know what his weight was here, but just he doesn't always look like that, which is a point to make off the bat. Like this 
is a lot more reasonable. No drugs, no fancy isolation movements, no Johnny bodybuilder or carb cycling, just shoulder press and deadlifts. Like if this is 233, you know, you can see the visible outline of the abs, but you can tell he's going to lose like 10, 15 plus pounds in order to get in shape to actually, you know, go to a photo shoot, go uh, to, a, you know, entertain and wrestling or whatnot. And it's sort of at six foot one, it sort of brings them into a more reasonable bracket that you might otherwise be able to wrap your head around that. Like, okay, maybe this is natural. This guy very notably always talks about how he has not progressed significantly at all throughout his career. And that's indicative of natural progression. If you actually go look at him from the start, this is him in his first YouTube video ever doing a hundred pound kettlebell snatches. And He's still in great shape. Is he as jacked as he was at uh, one of the WWE events? No, I don't think so. I think he's leaner and more jacked at the WWE events than here. Does that mean he couldn't have gained that muscle between 2014 and 2017 or 2018? Like, no, but it's like this guy's whole shtick is how he doesn't gain unnatural amounts at all. For the most part, he is actually pretty consistent. So I'll give him that. And some of this is just unflattering lighting, unflattering circumstances in general um but he definitely packed on a decent amount of muscle between here and getting onto uh the wwe uh developmental program or whatever it was uh the developmental brand nxt so going through his progress on youtube we get more insight into just how strong this guy is how athletically gifted this guy is how fucking powerful this guy is this guy's strength numbers are not Nothing to scoff at. Like you thought the uh, the uh, Teron Beckham guy was gifted, which he fucking is. <laughs> but Bugenhagen is like, he's not as strong as Beckham, but he's like, he's up there, dude. Like he's almost pushing five plates on the bench. He has a pretty nasty deadlift. He's uh, pushing some crazy numbers. And he always talks about staying natty. Like here he has the video, Stay Natty Bros, where he goes into why you should stay natty and kind of... Uh, what implications gear may have and why he is natural and blah, 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 blah. Hey, you can accuse me all you want, but you'll see that I'm always consistent. I'm never exploding, dropping down, breaking out or whatever. I, right, we're good. We're good, guys. So the strength gains and all that, that'll fluctuate. But the beautiful thing is the strength comes back if it is natural. All right, stick with the natural route. And that's what's gonna keep your mindset strong and keep the confidence and keep you hungry for the next level because you know you can. He basically says how he has like no side effects, he has no hair loss, no acne, no blah blah blah, so therefore he's natural. And it's like we all know that's you know a fucking stupid cop-out excuse. So, you know, let's defer to his progress and see like how true that statement actually is, that his progress is very very stable and there's no like giant fluctuations. Here's an update of his natty gains, February 18th, 2018. And to me, this looks reasonable, dude. This isn't peak condition though. And to be honest, it does look quite a bit different than he does during some of his peak shots, like in the uh, developmental program. Um, presumably this is a photo shoot for it. And you know, Maybe it's just the angle, maybe it's the lighting, maybe it's the pump he has here, but this looks like five to 10 pounds more of lean tissue than he does in the video he was just posing in that we just saw. But again, wildly different lighting, not peaked here. He's not like trying, he's not as cut as the other one. He might've been light, he's probably lighter in the other one. He probably just looks better. So you have to give him that because some of these videos he does are in like unflattering circumstances. Like here he's in his, uh, I don't know, living room or something. He has like weights fucking everywhere, apparently. And he's just sitting here. Like, this looks very natural to me. Like, this looks totally fucking reasonably natural. And it makes you think, is this even the same dude? And we go forward to, here he is posing, looking a lot more natty, in my opinion. Maybe it's just that he's not as cut, but this looks a lot more reasonably natty than the NXT shots, again. Um, here he is, uh, pressing every day, every day. Have I made visual deltoid gains? He's got a good, uh, 3d delt, but it, you know, the traps and the delts don't look, it doesn't look that unnatural. He just looks like a very built, like fucking adult weight carpenter motherfucker. Like he looks like a real man's man who fucking gets his hands dirty and is just genetically gifted. You know what I mean? But moving forward to the NXT 
debut, and the guy shreds down, and this is what he looks like, closer to shredded down, more when his physique is peaked, and he starts to take on that look that you see in that shot at the NXT shoot, where he looks more unreasonable to be natural. And you have to keep in mind here, the guy has 20 inch arms at this body composition. So it's not only that he has good inserts and he somehow, he weighs a lot too. Like he has a fucking significant amount of lean muscle mass for a guy who's trying to claim natural. He also has just the sheer like proportions to match. It's not just like he looks big and happens to have round muscle belly so he looks bigger than he actually weighs like he's actually a dense motherfucker and has like unnatural level fucking measurements while at that body fat percentage like it's not like what i'm trying to say is there's certain guys in uh bodybuilding who will look you know 40 pounds bigger than they are like flex wheeler what he used to step on stage at like i don't know 230 or 240 or something and he'd stand against guys who were like 270 on stage and look just as big as them or bigger just the way his how round his muscle bellies were. But if you actually like measured certain body parts, they would not be as big. With Bugenhagen, the guy actually has the fucking measurements too. Like here he is in this video. He pulls out the old measuring tape. Find out. New level of peak performance here, gentlemen. Notice the background music he has going <laughs> at the time he's measuring his arms. Get the, is, that a, is that a tape? Yeah. Can you see that? What does that say? 20. 20! Okay. You forgot the ladies. There are no ladies. It's the most macho thing ever, just asking the chick, what are those? She's like, 20 inches. It's like, fuck yeah, buddy. So he looks pretty unreal for a guy with 20 inch arms. He's not, this is not a fat 20 inch arm. Like the guy at your gym who's like, oh yeah, back in my day, I had 22 inch arms. He was just a fat motherfucker. This guy is actually six pack walking around, 230 pounds with 20 inch arms, totally naturally, and can bench almost five plates. It's like, it's like, dude, does more need to be said? I'm not gonna lie, I'm very compelled to give this guy the benefit of the doubt though, even though nothing steers in the direction of natural. I'm gonna circle back to his progress from the start. This is what he looked like when he was wrestling way back in the 120 kilogram weight class almost a decade ago. So you have to keep in mind, this guy is competing at 120 kilograms in, what is this, like state wrestling championships or something? So he is, uh, this is USA Wrestling, and he's wrestling here, and his body composition, notably, he's still pretty lean. You know, he doesn't look as jacked and developed into the muscle bellies as he does in his NXT days more recently, but his body weight, the weight class he's at, is basically the same thing. If he actually cut down a bit more, he might look pretty fucking similar. So again, this might just come down to a lot of angles, lighting, do you have a pump or not? How cut are you? Did you water deplete? Those sort of things. Some of the shots, he kind of goes up and down. But when you like really go back to the beginning, he he's been holding this amount of lean mass for a long time, at least based on the wrestling days. Some of his YouTube days, maybe he just fell off the map with his training because when you go back to the beginning, like these kettlebell snatches and some of these, uh, you know, some of the first videos he did, it doesn't look as good but it could just be down to the lighting again, like I said, because like here, this to me looks like off cycle as fuck when you're just sitting in the living room here chilling, or is this just the result of you haven't been training for a while? It's hard to say with some of these guys because like when they regress, it's like, you're just assuming that they do everything on point all the time and it may not be the case. Maybe he actually just didn't fucking train. Like you're, if you're a natural, it's not like you have to be on point all the time either. So it's not like he's, he's not allowed to regress if he's natural, you know what I mean? It just doesn't work like that. You can still fall off the fucking map if you're natural. A lot easier actually, because it's way harder to maintain your progress when you don't have super physiological amounts of anabolic holding onto everything when you're doing fuck all. So anyways, without getting derailed entirely, when he actually cuts down and reaches his peak final form, me mediocre roid free physique. And he's just like harsh trolling all the time, the guys who think he's a fake natural. And you know, he he's right on the borderline of what most people would consider like 
maybe this guy is a freak. Maybe he actually looks like this. At the NXT show, he did not look natural at all though, and he looks significantly better than he normally looks. He retained all of his muscle during his cut, from the looks of it. The muscle bellies are full, he doesn't look flat, everything just looks fucking on point. And at this same body fat percentage previously, he was not this big, at least from what I could tell. Or at least a similar, he like maybe packed on like four or five pounds at most. So at the end of the day, I, I'm even going back and forth as I'm fucking talking here. Here's the most recent Im, uh, videos here in 2020. Some of these are pretty far apart, but he hasn't been the most consistent poster, at least up until recently. And here he is looking actually very natural, but this is in the worst, most unflattering lighting. And he is in the middle of a presumably a bulk phase because he's fluffy as fuck now and he doesn't look nearly as impressive as he used to. So basically he reached his peak body composition for an event with NXT and that's where he gets all these shots where he looks, everyone thinks there's no fucking way he's natural and this is kind of like the peak of everything he is. Peak sharpness, peak fullness, peak fucking detail, peak everything. And this is what we refer to as, is this possible? Because moving forward to now, I don't think anyone would argue that you might be able to look like this naturally. Like this is not overly, you know, this is not hard to wrap your mind around, whereas some of the NXT shots are. He also posted a video in 2018 talking about how he had to ditch his supplement company sponsor because they had products that he didn't know if they would cause him to get popped on his random drug tests with the WWE, which we all know how fucking ridiculous the WWE testing guidelines are. But he seems to take it pretty serious. They're not going to be like, well, we're going to, oh, he tested positive, but we're going to overlook this. This is a, a legit come third party that WWE goes through because they want to ensure that up and coming talent is clean. They don't have any issues like that, stuff, that, issues that they've had in the past. And don't bring up names. Oh, this guy is clearly on some, this guy. I don't know what these people are. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what their policy is. All I can speak for is myself. All right, we're all independent contractors, ultimately, hired through this company. So since we're all independent contractors, essentially, I don't know. I mean, I, but that's in my... So in this video, he basically goes on to say how he gets randomly drug tested and how, you know, how could you, uh, you know, get around it when it's random and he gets tested every month and this company is hired by the WWE. It's not the WWE, so it's not like you could, you know, trick this company and blah, blah, blah. And it's like... I'll be honest, listening to him talk about it, it's like, it's like, yes, you could get around the test very easily. Like the WWE is like, it's a joke in terms of the testing. It's all a fucking front. Everybody in the WWE that is sane and wants to maximize their career essentially is on sauce. Like go look at fucking Ryback, go look at John Cena, go look at Batista, go look at like literally any of these dudes. Like are any of them conceivably natural? Like no, obviously not. So for Bugenhagen to even go on to elaborate on how random testing is credible in any capacity whatsoever with the WWE is ridiculous when we already know there's people cheating in fucking UFC and things that are way more intense than this. I don't know if you want to consider this a sport, but are like, you know, like sports that are more widely accepted as sports. I'm trying to like, I don't, I'm not judging the, you know, the WWE. It's obviously the guys who do it are incredibly athletic and um, gifted, you know, athletes who could probably play like fucking professional sports in other leagues. I'm just, you know what I'm trying to say? This is not like, this is a front of a testing program compared to an actual like mainstream sporting event that is not purely staged. I don't know how to put it, but you know what I'm trying to fucking say here. So he goes on to elaborate on that, how he dropped his supplement company because he didn't even, he didn't want to accidentally pop for something. Um, how this, you know, test covers anabolics and stimulants and blah, 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 blah. Um, I've elaborated in great detail about how you could skirt these tests. Frankly, I don't think he knows how to do that. I don't think he is employing anybody to help him do that. I don't think he has a chemist or a consultant like myself to help him get around this shit. Um, I don't know. He just seems like a guy with, integrity and that's sort of like i don't know like maybe i'm getting like too personally tied up into the way he's talking in the videos but it sounds like he, he's like trying to make a very strong case for himself to the point where it's like and it doesn't sound like he knows shit and that's not an excuse whatsoever to give grant him natty status but the physique 
does look natural. And to me, the weight itself does not make sense with the strength. Like it just flat out, it does not. But I do know individuals and there are genetic outliers are out there and it's conceivable that he's just one of those heavy motherfuckers who holds a lot of weight naturally and could otherwise be a guy who hopped on gear and then would be like a good like open bodybuilder. Like the guys who are open bodybuilders would probably be good natural bodybuilders too if they didn't take gear and they'd probably look, you know, probably have similar body compositions proportionally to their weight than this guy. So it's tough though, because you get into it and you actually look at what his weight is on paper and how much body fat he holds. And when you look at it, like when you strip him down to like no body fat, he's, he's holding like, like, like fucking 200 and like 200 pounds of like pure contractile tissue on his frame completely naturally. It seems unreasonable as fuck with his strength. I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's really hard to wrap your head around and I'm really on the fence with this one, but I'm leaning towards he might just be the 0.000001%. And it's on a hunch. I think he probably, I'll be honest, I think he's natural right now. And that's even with him pushing his strength numbers recently. He's obviously on a bit of a uh, bulk here. Um, he's still fucking huge though, don't get me wrong. Um, he's just not looking the way he does in the NXT shots. He's, he just, but he would just have to strip the body fat off, in my opinion. The guy has looked essentially the same since day one, for the most part, unless he's under unflattering lighting circumstances. However, some of the shots in his living room and stuff, he looks totally different. Is that him off cycle or him just not training? I think he has done something at least once. I don't think he is a chronic user necessarily who is cruising on high dosages all the time. I think he has probably touched something at least once or twice. Um, and wh why would you not have the incentive to given this guy's uh, career path that he has chosen? It, it would be fucking ridiculous to not take advantage of that in my opinion. So I'm going to say not lifetime natural, but I think that a significant portion of his fitness journey has actually been natural. So I'm gonna leave it at that. This was a fucking hard one actually on the fence to be honest. Like a lot of people would look at this guy's physique Look at his lifts, look at his weight and body composition, 20 inch arms, relatively lean. Like that, that was like a bulk up 20 inch arm, but still, it was still relatively lean. A lot of people look at this guy and they think there's no fucking way. It's iffy, dude. It's iffy. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Some of these are very conceivably natural in my opinion. Some of them are just not. Some of them actually are though. So to me, I'm going to give them, like I said, the benefit of the doubt on this one. And um, I think he's a genetic phenom, to be honest. Like here he is, 2017, in less flattering lighting circumstances. And you know, a lot of people just claim he's off cycle here. Some people might claim this is bad lighting. Some people might claim no pump. Some people might claim a fucking million things. I think he's not a lifetime nanny, but I think he is not all the time on gear. That's where I'm gonna leave it on this one. So this was a fucking tough one though. This was highly requested and I went back and forth in my head even as I was filming this. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And uh, I don't know, just the look of his physique too. It's, it's hard to pick it out sometimes, but like often you can kind of like deduce based on this sort of like androgenicity activity that you have in certain body parts. Is it a scientific breakdown to get that? Looking at AR density and expression in certain tissues? No, not really. It's sort of extrapolating like anecdotal data based on some random fucking studies and just like a pattern we see anecdotally. But oftentimes the smell test or the eye test or whatever it is you want to call it is often the, the actual answer. Like when you see these guys, you can often see the difference between a guy, even if he is 190 on gear versus a guy who's 220 natural, the guy, even if he's 220 and has more muscle than the 190 guy, the look they have can be substantially different and very discernible between the two, if that makes any sense. A lot of you guys who know how to spot guys on gear will know what I'm talking about though. So, and this is kind of what you see when I go into some of my celebrity breakdowns in the past where I talked about Kumail Nanjiani, when I talked about Hugh Jackman, these kind of looks aren't natural. You can just tell. They're just like so fucking obvious, even though those guys are probably holding 30, 40 pounds muscle less than Bugenhagen but they're sauced as fuck. 
That's a perfect example of what I'm trying to say and I've been trying to get out in English for the last five minutes. Compare that kind of a physique, a Kumail Nanjiani, to a Bugenhagen, and you'll see the difference between genetic elite, mostly naturally in my opinion, versus a guy who is saucy as fuck and has shitty genetics, to be honest. So that's the difference. So take from that what you will. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Is he natty right now? Lifetime natty, never touch shit. Is he blasting and cruising? Is he on TRT? Do you think he's actually very intelligent, and knows how to skirt these drug tests and is just making it seem like he's a dumbass? Um, let me know what you think. And I don't mean he's an actual dumbass. I just mean, is he trying to make it seem like he doesn't actually know anything about chemical enhancement? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. All the comments are much appreciated. Help push the algorithm. Please like, subscribe. Check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I am associated with in the video description down below, my TRT clinic, as well as uh, Gorilla Mind, Gorilla Mode, my new Tropic and pre-workout formulas I designed from scratch myself. I write these out on a Word document based on everything I would want to see in a product. As a formulator, I don't outsource these to private label manufacturers to write up what's the best margins. I literally sit on a Word document and write this shit out from scratch. I encourage you to pull out your current pre, compare it to the label on ours. It's pretty transparent why ours are shitting on all the rest of the industry right now. So check it out. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.